We're going to commence our service this evening with hymn 286. 286. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. And as we sing this hymn, the colours will be received at the front of the church. We'll stand and worship the Lord after the introduction uh, to 86. Let's stand and sing. Commit ourselves to the Lord in prayer, uh, seek the face of God, or ask for his blessing upon the meeting this evening. Let's pray. Our gracious God, our loving, eternal, heavenly Father, we bow humbly and reverently in thy presence. We approach thee through thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, the way that's been opened for a sinful man to approach a holy God through the cross work of the Saviour. Thank you, Lord, for redemption ground. We thank you for the blood that was shed by our Saviour that washes us from every sin. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Lord, we thank thee, Lord, even as we were thanking this morning at communion time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we thank thee, Lord, your giving God and you give good things unto your people. And we praise you, Lord, for the blessings of the Christian life. We thank you for those who are saved, for the joy we have in Christ. We thank you for the peace we have with God. And we thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that dwells within. Uh, we thank you also for the Word of God and for the freedom we have, Lord, at this time to proclaim the Word in this land. And we pray, Lord, you will help us to be faithful, Lord, in the preaching of that Word. We pray in this meeting, Lord, that we'll hear a faithful preaching of the Word of God. We'll hear the gospel once again. We pray for those who are saved. It will thrill our souls. It will build us up in our faith. And for those who are not saved, we pray, Lord, it will convict them of their sin and bring them to a saving faith and knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the gospel. 
Thank you, Lord, you did not leave us in our sin. You did not leave us, Lord, on our way to a lost eternity. But, oh, Lord, you stepped in. You gave us the offer of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that tonight souls will close in with that offer of mercy. And even this night will be the night they bow the knee and get right with the Lord. We pray, Lord, you'll bless the one who'll preach tonight. We pray you'll give him help. We pray, Lord, you will aid him, fill him with thy spirit. And we pray, Lord, that even through thy servant tonight, we'll hear thy voice speaking to our hearts, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Pray, O Lord, for each home represented here tonight in this meeting. We pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon our homes. Pray, most of all, your blessing will be upon our homes spiritually. Lord, we pray that you'll bring our loved ones and family to the Savior. Bless this meeting tonight. Lord, we pray that Christ will be magnified in this meeting tonight. We ask you, Lord, you'll be in our midst tonight. Speak to hearts, we pray. Lord, do miracles in this meeting tonight, we ask. May the hand of God be seen, we ask, in our Savior's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. I tell you, worship the Lord with one further hymn, 306. 306. I'm not ashamed to owe my Lord or to defend his cause, maintain the honor of his word, the glory of his cross. We'll stand once again and worship the Lord after the introduction, please. Let's stand sing. call upon some of the men folk, Calvary singers, to minister to us in song.
rejoice in the truth of that hymn. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, and thank God, no matter how big the burden is, the Lord Jesus Christ is the great burden bearer. The greatest burden is the burden of our sin, but thank God the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from every sin. Now the offering is going towards, I think it's the Lord Dennis Gillen Memorial Orphan Fund, and we're going to lift your offering this evening. We're going to sing another hymn. Uh, whilst the offering is being lifted and uh, that is said that takes away the pain of parting so therefore we'll sing the hymn whilst the offering is being received 615 615 the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord she is his new creation by water and the word 615 we'll keep our seats and our offering for God's work received now if you have to get into your wallet uh, and then you can stand for to get that, but you'll be seated otherwise and not there. And uh, we'll have the offering, given the tithes and offerings for the work of the Lord in the Lord and Skill Memorial Orphan Fund. Let's sing this hymn together, please. <laughs> Seated, the men are going to sing just their final piece before we come to the preaching of God's Word. Mm. 
Haven of rest, and I'll sail the wild seas no more. I want us to read some verses from God's precious and God's holy truth this evening. And we're turning to the book of Daniel and the sixth chapter of the book of Daniel this evening for our reading from God's infallible word. That's Daniel chapter 6. I'm going to read some verses from God's precious word. If you have your Bibles, turn up there. And if you haven't, then it says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And by the grace of God, You'll hear this evening as we read the scriptures together in Daniel chapter number 6. That's Daniel chapter 6 and commencing to read at the verse number 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. 
Then this Daniel was prepared above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against us, Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for, for, for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it may be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore Darius, or King Darius, signed the writing and the decree, and now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And then down in verse number 18 it says, Then the king went to his palace, Passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music before or brought before him, and his sleep went from him. And then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angels and shut the, the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocence he was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. And Daniel was taken out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, their children and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or even they came at the bottom of the den." Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And we end our reading there, and we know that God will add his blessing for, to the reading of his precious word. Let's just bow our heads for a wee word of prayer. Let's pray together, please. Eternal God and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight that we can turn to thy precious and thy holy word. We thank thee that thy word liveth and it abideth forever. Though heaven and earth may pass away, my word, says the living God, shall never pass away. Bless us tonight as we study thy word, for we pray in Jesus' precious name and for his glory. Amen. Brethren, we're living in very challenging days. We see indeed the great challenge against the Christian faith 
and those that stand up for the crown rights of King Jesus. Indeed, many see great changes over these past number of years. We can see the darkening clouds of, of great opposition against the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that stand for the Lord find great opposition against them in these days. Now, Daniel lived through great changes in his life, just as we are living great changes in our lives too. But thank God when we look at Daniel, Daniel remained constant for God no matter how much the circumstances changed. And let me tell you this, time may change and people may change, but the Word of God still remains the same. And the standards of this book haven't changed. Now, man has tried to rewrite the book, but I want to tell you God's Word is forever settled in heaven. For God says in his precious word, though heaven and earth may pass away, my word, my word shall never pass away. And no matter how much man tries it, the word of God will still remain constant, for the word of God is still the same. Daniel grew up under a number of kings and lived under many kings, starting there in Jerusalem under the king of Judah. But sad to say, there was a great time of deportation because of the sin of the people of Judah. The people sinned against God. And because of the sin of the nation of Judah, there came the judgment of God. And friend, let me tell you, I believe with all my heart and I fear that our nation that has sinned against God and against his word and against his standards and are passing laws against the precious word of the living God, I believe that our nation will pay the price because the Word of God says, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, or even a nation soweth, that shall they also reap. Now, Daniel lived in a very sinful city, an immoral and ungodly city in Babylon. And yet Daniel stood with great courage for, the, for God and for truth. And he proved that faithfulness is not conditional upon our circumstances. We cannot excuse our lack of faithfulness to God because to say, well, listen, things are different, people's different, so therefore you can't take the same stand today for the gospel or the crown rights of King Jesus. Let me tell you, my friend, doesn't matter how the circumstances change, doesn't matter the day in which we live, you and I are called upon to be faithful to the Lord. And you as brethren in this institution, remember this. This is not just simply colors around your neck. Because you profess to be adherents to the Protestant Reformed faith. And let me tell you, the word Protestant is not just simply a slogan. But the word Protestant, uh, people say, well, what is it? It is just simply anti. You're against something. And that is a part of what Protestantism means. You are against falsehood. You are against the falsehoods, the teachings, not only of the Church of Rome, but also the falsehood of every other false cult that there is. But friend, you're not only against, you're for. And to be a Protestant, a Protestant, you are a witness for. What are you a witness for? You're a witness for the truth. Now, what is the truth? Well, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so what you're actually acknowledging as a Protestant, that you're a witness for the truth. You are a witness for Jesus Christ. And that is a challenge for each and every one in this service tonight. Whether you have the colors on or whether you haven't, you say, well, I am a Protestant. Let me tell you, my friend, that means that you are a witness. You are stating that you are a witness for the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. And the question is this, can you honestly say before God that you are a witness for Jesus Christ? Is your life a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you a personal faith and trust in Jesus Christ? You see, Daniel trusted God's sovereignty to bring him through even the darkest valley and even the greatest trial that he ever had to face. And you know something the book of Daniel teaches me? It's this, that God is still in control. God is control of human history. And let me tell you this, 
God has already written the last chapter. And that's the wonderful thing, is that those who are standing on the side of Christ, those that know and love the Lord Jesus Christ, can honestly say, no matter what they have to face, no matter what they have to suffer, thank God, God's written the last chapter, we win. And those that are standing with Christ, win. Because, thank God, in all things, He, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, will have the preeminence. And even though we look around us and the world may be disintegrating all around us tonight, let me tell you this. God is still upon the throne, and he still remembers his own. And the wonderful thing about Daniel was this. Daniel hadn't the privilege of having the Bible that you and I have, because the whole of the Scriptures was not written in the days of Daniel. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart, in other words, he had a heart religion. He had a heart experience of God himself. And friend, that's what's so important tonight, that you have a heart experience of the new birth, that you have a heart experience of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Because if you haven't that heart experience and you know not the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what else there is. It doesn't matter what else you say, my friend. It is only Jesus Christ who is the way to heaven. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There are multitudes of way to hell, friend. And sad to say, multitudes are on it, and many are on that road. It's a crowded road that leads to a Christless eternity. But there's only one way to heaven. And that is not via the church. And that is not via a preacher. My friend, that is not via a communion table. That is not via a baptismal tank or font. But that is in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Because Jesus says, I am the way. No man, it doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter whether you're black or yellow, red or white, doesn't matter whether you're Protestant or Roman Catholic or Islam or whatever it is, let me tell you, my friend, those things of themselves will not take you to heaven. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the cleansing of your sin in the precious blood of Christ is the only way to peace and pardon. Peace through the blood of his cross. And I stand on this pulpit tonight unashamedly as a Protestant minister, and I stand tonight standing against the falsehoods and the teachings of error, wherever it comes from, in these last days of apostasy, in these last days of declension. But my friend, listen, I have to tell you faithfully, there is only one way to heaven, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord who left heaven's glory, who came to Calvary's cross, who shed his precious blood to take away your sin, that you might have peace with God through the blood of his cross. Have you that heart experience? Daniel purposed in his heart. Heart experience. And friend, it's not a head knowledge. There are many people, let me tell you, you could ask them questions about the Bible, and they could give you the answer. I could say, well, listen, could you tell me what's John 3.16? And perhaps maybe every person in this audience today in this congregation could stand and say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And friend, you know the verse. But do you know the Savior? Have you that knowledge of him? Are you trusting whosoever believeth in him should not perish? Can you honestly say, thank God, I never perish because I have my faith, my trust in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. The hymn writer said, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other rocks are shamrocks. And so they are. Everything else is a sham because, thank God, only Christ is the way to heaven. Now, Daniel had a trust in God. He knew the Lord. He had a heart experience. And when we come to chapter 6 of the book of Daniel, Daniel had experienced many challenges in his life. But, friend, he's about to face another. Do you know what age Daniel was at this time when he was thrown into the lion's den? you know what age he was? He's 85. 85. 85 years of age. 
whenever he was going to encounter one of the greatest challenges of his life. For 68 years, Daniel lived in Babylon at this time. You see, as a young man of 17, as a teenager, Daniel was taken away. He was taken away by the forces of Nebuchadnezzar. He was brought into a foreign land. He was taken away from his, his people, from his nation, and from uh, his, uh, the place which he knew as home. And he was taken into a foreign land. And there in that foreign city of Babylon, for those 68 years, Daniel lived under that foreign power. Now you can imagine... You can think a man at 85 years old. You say, well, listen, he's run a good race. You say, well, I, he could say like Paul, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And until now, Daniel has never lost his zeal for God and for the things of God. And you can say, well, listen, 85, well, I'm sure he's not what he used to be. I can tell you you're wrong. Daniel was as fervent for God at 85 as he was whenever he was 15. He never lost his love for the Lord. And my friend, let me tell you this. It's not the first mile, it's the last mile. And there are too many that begin well, but sadly, they finish poorly. But Daniel didn't. Daniel kept on running with patience the race that was set before him. And it doesn't matter what age you are, if you know and love the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what age you are, friend, listen, this world's not a friend to God's people. This world's not our home. And if you think that this world is a friend to God and to grace, I can tell you, you're going to find out differently. Because we're living in days of darkness. We're living in days of persecution. My friend, let me tell you, you can say whatever you like against the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the radio. Listen to the television. And they'll say anything. They'll make mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ. You make mockery of Islam, do you see? You'll be before the court. You can mock Jesus but the world will laugh with you. We're going to face persecution for our faith. And if you believe in the Protestant Reformed faith, friend, I can tell you, in these last days, in the days of declension, in the last of the last days, which I believe that we're living in, we're going to face opposition. And Daniel was an old man of 85 years of age. And once again, he's facing another great test. Now, Daniel was blessed. Because whenever he was under the king of Babylon, Daniel was exalted to a position of power. And then the Babylonian forces were overtaken, and the Medes and Persians came in. But you know, Daniel was still trusted, even by Darius, the king of the Medes and Persians. Because the Bible says in verse number 3, Daniel had an excellent spirit within him. He was preferred above the president's and princes, because he had an excellent spirit in him. He was living right. His character, his character was something that my friend that stood up out, out in his day. And the Bible says in verse number four, then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find, they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. Not a good testimony. He was found faithful. He was faithful to God, friend, no matter what the situation was. He was faithful to God. And the devil's crowd, now they are lining up against him. They're trying to, to down the child of God. They're trying to destroy the child of God. Now, Daniel had done no wrong because the Bible says, neither was any error or fault found in him. He was a godly man. He stood for that which was right. And even though he was standing for that which is right, friend, the enemy was against him. But thank God he remained consistent. He didn't, my friend, he didn't just cut the, 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 the cloth to suit the crowd. And you were living in a day and an age that that's exactly what's happening. People are cutting the cloth to suit the crowd. Preachers are doing that. People are doing that. You see, if they're amongst this crowd, they're one thing. If they're among that crowd, they're different. And let me tell you, friend, that's not what God requires. 
God requires that you and I be consistent. God requires that you and I be like Daniel. It says he was faithful. Faithful what? Faithful to God, first and foremost. Faithful to God. It was God first. Notice the integrity. Notice his stature here. Verse number 5 is said, Then these men, uh, then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of God. Do you know what they're bearing witness? That Daniel lived a life of purity before him. He had a testimony. And he lived there, my friends, for all of those years, 68 years, amongst the people of Babylon. And yet he had this testimony. They watched him. They tried to find fault in him. But thank God he stood true. And I say to a child of God, if you know and love the Lord Jesus, let me tell you, the world's watching you. They're watching you. I say to the, those who are believers tonight, listen, the world will not read the Bible. They'll read you. They'll watch you. And they'll watch to see what you say with your lips and the life that you're living to the go together. And friend, let me tell you, if they don't, they'll say, there's a hypocrite. I read this. If you were arrested and charged with being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If you were arrested and charged with being a Christian, that you really love the Lord, would there be the evidence to convict you for that? Is that the life that you're living before the world? And these men knew that if they were going to destroy Daniel, if they were going to engineer a situation to bring Daniel down in the eyes of King Darius, it had to be concerning his faith, because they knew that was the first thing. That meant more to Daniel than position or anything else. They knew that Daniel would undoubtedly choose the law of God before the law of the king. And so, friend, they set Daniel up. They set Daniel up, not, my friend, to, to try to depose him from being the first of the three presidents. No, no. They set him up to destroy him. They wanted to destroy. Deposing them was not enough as far as they were concerned. They wanted to destroy God's child. And so therefore, they go into the presence of the king. And this is what they tell the king. Verse 7, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a decree. Friends, it wasn't true. That wasn't true. But you what about a lie? What about telling a lie? Sure, it doesn't really matter these days. You can lie away as long as it, it's a lie that gets you into a better position or it'll get you uh, 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 with, with more favor. You can lie away. No, friend, you can't. There is no lie that's off the truth. There is no lie that's off the, tr the truth because a lie is still a lie. And here we find they went into the presence of the king to set Daniel up and they said, all the presence of the kingdom. That wasn't true. Daniel was a president. But he didn't agree with us. But they said, oh, king, every one of them, we've all come together and we're, we've all decided, listen, that if any man shall ask a petition of any god or any man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, be cast into the den of lions. Darius, you're going to be God for 30 days. We're making you God for 30 days. And friend, let me tell you, whenever the, whenever the serpent came to Eve in the garden, he said to her, you know, if you do take of that forbidden fruit, you'd become as God. You'd become your own God. You'd become your own master of your life. And people today, that's how they're living, as if that they were God, as if, my friend, they were the master of their lives. No one can tell me what I ought to do. No one can tell me what is right anymore. Because it seems to be that nothing's right anymore. It's wrong that's right. And right seems to be wrong. The truth is tramped on the streets today, mocked it, laughed at, sneered at. Because you stand up for the truth of the gospel and what God says in his precious word. And so therefore they, Satan said, 
you'll become as God. No, friend, she didn't. Neither did Adam. It was the fall. They fell into sin. They took the forbidden fruit. They listened to the lie of the devil. And friend, let me tell you this tonight. Brethren, ladies and gentlemen, you may think that you'll get away with your sin and that you can live as you like and you can reject the Son of God. You can trample under your foot the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You can walk past the cross and it means absolutely nothing to you. You'll make it to heaven your way. You may think that. But I want to tell you it's a lie. It's a lie. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right unto one, but the end thereof is the way of death. And you might think that you can live as you like, and you can do what you like, and go where you like, and say what you like, and sin as you like, and nobody will tell you. Let me tell you, friend. One day you stand before God. And the books are open. And you realize that God is the final say. That he's the one who is sovereign in all things. And man shall stand. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And every man was judged according to their works. And the sad reality is, if you are relying upon good works to get you to heaven, friend, you'll never make it. Because salvation is not through works of righteousness that we can do. But salvation is through the finished work of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of Christ, which is reckoned to those who put their faith and trust in the Savior. I want to beg you tonight, brother. I want to beg you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I want to beg the, beg the band members tonight. I want you to know this tonight, that Jesus Christ is not a way to heaven. He's the only way. And without him, without him, you will be lost. Not only for time, but without him you will be lost for all eternity. And Daniel loved the Lord. These men knew that Daniel was going to be faithful to God. And not only do we see his stature, but we see his steadfastness. Because in verse number 10 it says, When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and he prayed and gave thanks before God. Here's these words as he did aforetime. In other words, he didn't start praying. He kept on praying. You know, there's some people, let me tell you, whenever their back's against the wall and there's nowhere else to go and there's no one else to turn to, they say, Preacher, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? But friend, let me tell you this. They've lived up until that moment and have never bowed the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ himself and confessed their sin and received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, Daniel, what did he do? What did he do? Well, he could have said, well, you know what I'll do is just, I'll pray in private. I'll go away into a wee, a wee hidey hole and nobody can see me because I don't want to break the, 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 the law of the Medes and the Persians. Nobody will see me, so therefore they'll not know I'm defying the king's commandment. I'll close the windows. I'll pray in secret. Or he could have said, well, sure, it's only for 30 days. I'll stop praying. I don't need to pray. Sure, I've been praying all these years, and sure, I can stop praying for 30 days. Wouldn't it be far better to be preserved for the greater good than to be found out praying? I'm not asked to bow down before an idol. I've just been told I'm not to pray for 30 days. Daniel, you're 85. It's time for somebody else to take a stand. You don't need to do it. 
But friend, he didn't do any of those things. He kept on praying. Just as he did before, three times a day, and the Bible says he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. That was towards the temple. Praying towards the temple. That was a promise of God. Given away back in the days of Solomon the king. And friends, let me tell you, he just kept on praying, seeking the face of God. Listen, he would rather lose his life than lose communion with God. Is that you? The Bible says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. It has been said, one of the ways to, we- to measure a man's character is to see how he reacts when he's faced with a crisis. Daniel was faced with a crisis, but he knew his God. And friend, that's the only thing that'll bring you through, is to know the Lord. To know the Lord. To have that personal faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He knew the consequences of remaining true to God. But friend, rather than fear man, they fear God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now time's away tonight. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. The king tried to get out of it because the king did not realize that he was just being played a sucker by these presidents and these uh, princes and the counselors and the captains and all the governors. He'd only been played a sucker by them against Daniel. And the king tried to see, but then, of course, he had passed the law of the Medes and Persians, and that was the unalterable law that could not be changed. So before the king sent Daniel into the den of lions, this is what he said to Daniel. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. What a testimony Daniel had before a heathen king. And friend, it's so important that you and I have a testimony before the world that they will know that we are the Lord's children. And what the king was saying is, I can't help you, Daniel. But God can. But God can. And I'm telling you in this service tonight, every last one of you in this meeting, I can't save you. But Jesus can. Jesus can. I can't forgive you your sin. Neither can any other earthly priest who pretends he can. But thank God, God forgives it. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And we sang the hymn tonight at the start of the service. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Listen to these words. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Thank God there's still power in the blood of Jesus. It seems to me a message is forgotten about. But I want to tell you, friend, the Word of God says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. There's no forgiveness. But Jesus Christ, God's Son, left the glories of heaven. And he stepped into this old world in this scene of time. And he lived 30 years, Fred, 33 years, a spotless and a sinless life. And then he died an atoning death upon the cross. He died that I might be forgiven. He died to make me good, that I might go at last to heaven, saved through his precious blood. And I know there are many people that don't like that word, friend. Well, you can like it or lump it. 
for I'm telling you the Bible says Jesus says I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved the Lord Jesus said neither is there salvation in any other there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved Salvation is a must. Salvation is found in Christ. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Daniel was put in a den of lions, friend. But listen to me carefully. Daniel was safer in the den of lions with God with him. Then all those rest outside had no faith in God. I'd rather have Jesus in silver and gold, the hymn writer said. I'd rather be his than of riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus in houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Yes, Daniel was put in the den of lions, but God delivered him. And God is able to deliver you tonight from the power of sin. He breaks the power of cancel sin he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. And Daniel came out of the lion's den, friend. And there was no hurt on him. Why? But God. God. God was with him. Now you and I have to face a challenge, friend. I don't know when. You and I have got to face the last enemy, the Word of God says. The last enemy which shall be destroyed is death. And every one of us have to face it. I asked you before God tonight, if this is your last night on earth, if this is the last message you'll ever hear, can you honestly look toward heaven tonight and say, Thank God, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I have my faith, my trust in Christ alone. My hope is found. And if you haven't, I want to tell you, it's not a matter of many twelfths pass. I don't many, don't, not matter of many walks you have. If you're not walking with Christ and in Christ and Christ in you, where Christ is, you'd never be. What an awful tragedy. To live, to die, to face eternity without Jesus. Man, I've been honest with you. God forbid that you'll die in your sin. But if you do, you cannot say, I went to McCray's church for the Orange Parade before the twelve, and he never told me I needed to be saved. He talked about other things, but he never told me the most important thing. I needed to be ready. 
to meet God. Daniel had the Lord. Have you? That's the question. But that's all I'll count. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy word this evening. We pray that thou will bless thy word to all of our hearts. We pray that our God, that thou wilt help us to face another night with that sweet assurance that all is well, and that we know the Lord. Help us, our God, to have our faith and trust in Christ alone. And grant that, Lord, that if we never meet again this side of heaven, and grant that we'll meet in the glory itself at the feet of Jesus. For Jesus' sake. Amen. A couple of verses of a hymn as we close tonight. It's the words of that lovely old hymn, When peace like a river attendeth my ways, and sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. And the hymn is uh, 351, 351. And we're going to stand this hymn, and then after the, we come to the second verse, I would ask the brethren to come forward, and we'll have the, the taking of the colors. Let's sing just verses 1, 2, and 3. We'll stand to sing.
God and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the truth of those words, for those that can sing it from the depths of our being, how wonderful it is. It is well. It is well with my soul. Grant that each and every one gathered in thy house tonight will have that personal faith and trust alone in thy lovely Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so separate us with thy blessing. Keep us in thy fear, put upon us thy favor until the day breaks and the shadows of earth have fled away and the redeemed of God gather safely home in thy presence forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen.